workflow, data management, they go hand in hand. Often is the case, people will go out, do some research, watch some reviews, figure out, hey, I'm gonna go purchase one of these NAS systems, and then realize that they needed something else because it doesn't fit their workflow. Whether you're a business person that is growing their business, you're a creative type that has a design agency that is growing too fast, and now you're moving into, say, 4K and from 1080p, or you're just some person that has a hobby with the family and wants to save all their work, uh, this video will guide you in the thought process of what you need to be looking at and how to make a more informed decision. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nico. So today we're looking at this awesome NAS by Synology. It is a DS918 Plus. Yes, it's not the 920 Plus, it's the older version, but this is what I've been using and I'm gonna tell you why this is still relevant, why it's still good, and why you should be looking at different variety of NASs before you go make a purchase. Of course, the most critical thing is your workflow and understanding how your workflow will work. In my case and with my businesses and how I do everything, I use Google extensively. It it has been a godsend. We use a cloud backup and it's critical to our needs because whether we're doing something with business or we're you know, working on a project with creative stuff, we're realizing, hey, a lot of people are working and we need to get the data to all of them. How do you do that effectively? And how do you do it for you to be you know, on a pretty much efficient level so you're not wasting time, energy, and money, the resources you want to have into these things? So uh, where does this come into play? Well, when we upload everything after a project, it's ready for everybody the next day. We will make two copies of it. So there will be one copy that never gets touched and another copy that's available for everybody, no matter if it's the person editing or if it's another person that's jumping into the project that's gonna be working on some aspect of it or it's the client that needs some of the data. And what will happen is that this will be the backup that's physical, it's a tangible. This will be in a location where nobody will have access to it except for me and one other person so that if something happens, uh, data is available. And with this, I am able to now back up everything. Originally, I had done what most people do. I went online, tried to figure out the best case scenario for the cheapest way I could do it. And it turned out I kept on going up and up in price on my budget. This will generally happen with most people. Why? Because you realize your workflows over here and everybody that's giving the reviews and talking about different stuff, uh, you think it's good for you and then um, it might not fit that workflow and then you end up you know, wasting that money. In our case, I went with a DS218J uh, first and the story is that we had done a project and we lost the hard drive in a freak, freak accident of the computer shutting down. So we didn't lose it physically. Just the drive disappeared and I had to figure out what happened to the drive. It took about uh, three days and we were tempted to go out to one of these professionals to figure out how we can get the data off of it. Uh, but anyways, long story short, I figured it out. I got the data back. My heart had dropped. It was a massive project and I was like, we can't shoot this again. And it was just like, it, your heart just, it, it, you're like you, the ultimate moment you feel like, I failed and that was it. And I was like, I'll never experience that. And that's why I started looking at all these different things. And the 218J was good for a simple backup. And it's not fast. It doesn't do everything I needed to do with my workflow. It might fit other people's workflow. However, it is slow and it doesn't do what you need. And along comes this puppy that I was looking at. And I was like, you know what? I think I can get away with this and not have to go any bigger. Four drives is plenty. How do these things work? Well, they set up a RAID. So you put four drives into this. And basically, the four drives will sit inside and they kind of uh, mimic uh, each other and there's different RAID systems. Synology has its own system and you can, use, I've, I've tried it out, it works great. I didn't expect it to work that good, but it does work great. And this basically is 10 terabytes. All the disks in here are 10 terabytes. And at the end of the day, I can do a different RAID system uh, to get as much data as I think I need based on the security level or uh, backup trust I wanna have in the system. So if this goes down, I have two, uh, like if one of the drives fails, 
fails, I can pull it out, replace it. Or if two of the drives fail, I can pull them out and replace them. And I still have all my data backed up. And what this will do is then when you put something in, uh, put another drive in here, it will then re-back up and rework properly. I went with these uh, Exos. Uh, they're from a Seagate. These are uh, enterprise level. So they're going to last longer, they're faster. And on top of that, one of the most critical things that nobody will tell you is that when you purchase the lower end consumer ones, you might not be able to expand, uh, to use them and expand into different bays down the road. Like the Reds, the Western Digitals go up to uh, uh, eight drives that can connect and talk to each other. So you gotta be careful with this. I can't remember what these are rated, but I think it was like 20 something. So um, I, might be, I might be lying to you, it might be like 16 or something. So I think it was double or triple. So these were on sale. I found them, got them. I can't complain. Now, how does this uh, system really work and some of the ins and outs that you need to know? I have these drives and you load these drives up. This does lock and it's great and you've probably watched a million reviews on this so I'm not gonna go through the specifics. Uh, but what I am gonna talk about is this. On the inside, you will see stick of RAM there. It's not the RAM called Synology. There are uh, 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 two sticks uh, that you can put in here. You can go up to 16 gigabytes with this. However, uh, there is a disclaimer there that Synology tells you that when you put in more than eight gigabytes, they won't cover the warranty on it. So you gotta be uh, careful with that and keep your other sticks in case something happens. At the same time, uh, if they will watch a video like this, they'll probably be like, what? <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's a, a, a big deal and I don't think it's something that they're stingy upon. I think it's if it's like, if you put if you put non-RAM that they have, then something goes wrong because of the RAM. They don't want to deal with that. And I don't think they're going to be that picky. The other end of this is that you do have two spots here that will help you put SD cache on this thing, which is amazing. Now I have two of these and these are the uh, 200, uh, sorry, 250 gigabytes uh, SSDs, they're N NVMEs and they serve as cache purposes. So when do you need really these two and the RAM? You only need it if you're gonna use this as a server of some form, anything that's gonna be with the software that's needed. So if you are planning on creating any kind of environment on one of these, four gigabytes not enough that it comes with, you probably wanna want eight gigabytes and at the same time, you probably want 16 gigabytes if you're doing heavy duty stuff. And at that, um, you know, it's not that expensive to upgrade the RAM. At the same time, these aren't that expensive either and these will do you more than the RAM if you're just using this as a backup solution. On average, there's about a hundred and some gigabytes used at a time for the reads and writes. So this unit in itself, if you just bought it, loaded up hard drives, you're off to the races. So let's put this into perspective. You don't need to go with 10 terabytes like I did. You don't need to go with 16, which is like uh, what the top is to use with this, but you can go with two and four and you're good to go with an awesome backup solution. On the back side, you do have these two ports. Now these two ports will, will be your uh, connection to the internet and you will be able to connect these two ports with one gigabit link for each. They can aggregate. So you can use it as a fail switch if you have like say, uh, you know, two network providers, or you can have both of these connected, aggregate them and have two gigabit speed, which means what? Well, let's put this in perspective. One of these drives, which is one of the fastest for industry level, uh, goes up to 225 megabytes per second, which is what this can do as a max. On a read, on a write, it's 221. I can literally edit off of these. It is not a problem. If I'm connected to this through, say, a Wi-Fi 6 that I've connected these to, and I am off my laptop, off my computer, going at a Wi-Fi 6 connection, which is 2.4 gigabytes per second, well, these are going around 1.75 max out gigabytes per second. So you can literally max these out. On average, the software that you're editing with, there will be some spikes where they'll go as fast as it can go. Uh, so like basically you're, you're good with these because it'll reach that 225 and then it will calm itself down when you're just doing basic editing. You can literally edit up to 4K on this. I have, I, I've tried it out. Um, it was fine as, like, as long as you're not doing like super crazy stuff you can edit the basic stuff with 4k off of this um, and you know the 1080p for sure 4k depending on what you're doing and basically these uh, hard drives on average you'll see them working around 100 110 megabytes per second that it's moving with transfer rates and all that if you're editing directly off the system so the idea here now becomes 
What do you really need with your workflow? For us, we're just using this now as a backup. I was gonna use it for uh, a server-based system, and of course, I didn't. And because of that, um, you know, was a waste of money. No, I, I'm re the, the decision to go with this has been amazing. And I, I can't tell you the peace of mind I've had since getting this. I know it's there. If anything were to happen, man, we're on Google. It's backed up everywhere. I'm, I, I'm in heaven. Um, so let's jump on the computer and just talk about a little bit about what you need to be looking at when you're buying any one of these things. Doing a quick Google search with the NAS system, you will find a whole bunch of different name brands. Now, you will see the Western Digital Synology, which are you know two of the top uh, name brands that we know of. Uh, Sister is one of them that you don't really hear about that much, but people have had good success with them. And then you have QNAP, which is pushing the uh, name of the game with this uh, uh, new technology with like the internet side of things, because you'll see a lot of Thunderbolt 3 uh, accessible uh, drives uh, here as, as you go through the searches. And then the question is, what do you really need? If you look at the Synology, they have a, a rate calculator. And this is the first thing you want to do is how much actual storage do you need? Need. And you want to go into it and look at it based on budget because you'll be buying multiples of the different sizes. If you're, you're going from one terabyte all the way up to you know 16 terabytes, I went with the 10 terabytes. Now, when you click on this, it will give you an SHR RAID system, which is the proprietary from Synology, and then you'll have the different types of RAIDs that you can select depending on how knowledgeable you are in this. An SHR is uh, is like a RAID five, and basically, when you click one drive here, and you could just go with one backup, they give you a suggestion of which one you would would want to go with and they have a, a two bay one here now once you add another 10 terabyte we now see that it tells you hey on an shr you're getting 10 terabytes of backup and 10 is used for protection so if something happens in one drive you'll have the other drive but with a raid 5 you can't really do it and you'd have to pick one of the other raids that you can do that and they give you more selection here and now they're like they're saying hey you can do way more with this all right great so let's go add another terabyte here and we see that now we can turn into the four bay drives or the suggestion. Could you do less drives with uh, this DS418 or the 920 plus, which is the upgrade to the 918 plus? Yes, of course. However, they're telling you what are the suggestions and where you can go with this. And the question will be, well, why are they giving you a two bay here? And the answer is very simple. Even if I added another 10 terabytes, it's still gonna be here because you can do expansion slots on this and you can add another expansion unit and use these drives no problem. When you're looking at this from a scenario of, you know, my situation, I've already done this and I have the 918 plus and the 920, and I would be looking at it as, what would be my next move? Maybe I find two drives on sale that are 16 terabytes and now I'm gonna upgrade this. What is my case scenario? Or maybe I am looking at it and I see a good deal on a whole bunch more of 10 terabytes and I'm like, maybe I should just get another RAID system. The question would be what is best based on the technology right now? I'm really happy with what I have. However, I wanna see my upgrade and that would probably be link connection. So if I can go from a two uh, gigabit uh, speed to a five or a 10 gigabit speed, that would be amazing. Or hey, if I'm gonna be using one of these in another location like my house, maybe I just wanna have have something I can edit off of even better and I want to go up to like say a Thunderbolt 3 we'd be looking at different case scenarios and these are all upgradable like I could put a better card in here except I won't be able to say use um, uh, the I think it's the RAM module is it the uh, uh, SD SSDs I think it's one or the other um, now it's been a while since I looked at the upgrade for that because it, it just it left my mind after. Now, let's look at the idea of these systems. And say I went with a 920 plus. The first thing you want to look at is how fast is the chip and compare that with the other ones. You should always be comparing before you make a final purchase between say two or three, what is the chip? And then what is the capabilities for your RAM upgrade? What is the capabilities of what different drives you want to use? So maybe I don't use one of these big bay drives anymore and I go with a 2.5 inch or maybe I just want to go with the NVMEs. And is that even worth it? Because you're not going to get that fast speed that you're expecting on the expensive four terabyte drive. So, I mean, is that really even worth it? The uh, volume size, 
that's critical. Some of them will not go to the massive size because as we go back to the rate calculator in terms of how big these uh, systems will take or 16 terabytes. Now, uh, the new terabytes are coming out are going to be a uh, new hard drives coming out there will be 20 terabytes in there. So I mean, you won't be able to use 20 terabyte hard drives in here. And if you can, they won't recognize the four unless there's some firmware updates and stuff like that. So we have that kind of a scenario as well. The sound is critical when the fans are going full blast critical it will drive you insane unless you don't care because you're storing it somewhere else and of course what is the external port what is the port that's connecting you want to compare these now if i go over to a another older version of the 918 we'll see that everything that i looked at back then the the cpu just an older model not that much of an upgrade if i look at it from terms of uh what kind of uh, hard drives i can use okay not that much of a difference when i look at it from a perspective of the connection again not that much of a difference so the question would be would you need to spend the more money well do i really need to look at the upgradability of it and what does that really mean to us and that is the idea that you want to think about here can i save some money with going with the 918 if i'm going to keep this uh, for a long period of time do i just go to the 920 and we'd have to, i'd have to dive in more into would i be buying the um uh, 920 uh, plus, or if I have more drives, you know, would I be looking at it and saying, well, what if I found these two drives and I bought two of them? Now I can do more of a RAID system if I go with one of these six bays. And when you look at these six bays, uh, the idea here is that it's coming with a faster CPU. It's coming with a more opportunity for RAM that you're not going to have any warranty issues with. And of course, you can then look at it in terms of uh, ability to go with four uh, ports in the back so you can do way more link aggregation with it. So the question is expandability and what am I trying to do? I might just say, you know what, let me get four drives and get this unit and use the other one as a plain backup or sell this unit I have and uh, keep all my drives into this newer one. At the same time, last few things you want to be looking at is uh, it, the price point for Synology and the connections are expensive. However, if you look at QNAP and you look at QNAP and you say, hey, maybe I want to go uh, with a three a terrible uh, Thunderbolt 3 or 10 gigabit adapter, there are adapters that you can connect everything with QNAP. And now you add on this NAS and um, take out this adapter word. And basically you are bringing up all the different NAS systems that have different connections with uh, 10 gigabit speeds or Thunderbolt 3. So if you are working right off your desk and you don't care about anybody else, you just want to have, you know, uh, you know, 10 terabytes of backup in one of these units and you can do 10 gigabit speed or Thunderbolt 3 connection, you're off to the races, you know, you're off to the races. And I mean, this, like, uh, this is critical. We need to analyze this because when you're looking at it, there is a sound issue. There's a whole bunch of different issues. And do you really need to do something like this when you can have Wi-Fi 6, run that Wi-Fi 6 and things will go a lot smoother uh, through a backup through, um, uh, a location where you're not hearing this going and it's in a safer place, you know, maybe not in the place you're at or somewhere else. And there you have it. Those are the things that you need to be looking at with your workflow, comparing them to what you're trying to achieve. The first thing is those hard drives. And then it is going to be the speed and the unit and what it can do along with uh, what the uh, uh, link aggregation exists with the gigabit ports, or if you're going to be jumping up to those 10 gigabit or Thunderbolt speeds. Again, you would only need something like that if you're really need the speed off of a home-based solution or you got a lot of people working and you're going to make this into a server in which case you're going to need that ram in there and you're going to need those sd caching so it was ssd caching rather and you're going to want to make sure that you look at your environment as the future uh, idea of where everything's going with technology where are you going with your projects how fast are they growing if you're going from 1080p to 4k or maybe you're just you know growing exponentially with your company and you need some uh, uh, growth pattern in there with the hard drives expanding uh, all of this has to come into play so really think about this in terms of growth of that workflow and making everything more efficient leave a comment below and uh, tell me what you are using what are you planning on buying and how does it fit your work
workflow. Who knows? Somebody might be watching this. They, they, they might read your comment. They might relate with the workflow and they might start looking at something they didn't think about. And of course, uh, I'll be making all the Wi-Fi 6 router, uh, ASUS is the, the name of the game right now, uh, video so you can understand how that really relates to something like this when you're connecting one of these and you got Wi-Fi 6 so you can wirelessly edit stuff and be working away and not worried about speeds because um, it's a game changer, big game changer.